Okay, hi everybody, I'm John Lincoln with Ignite Visibility and welcome to another edition of Learning SEO with Ignite Visibility. Today I'm gonna to talk about a really important topic and it's not just important for SEO, it's also important for website development, for page speed, for social media marketing and that topic is image optimization. So I've got a bunch of stuff here, some stuff kind of basic, some stuff really advanced. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so what are your goals with, with image optimization? Well, really there's three main goals, okay? The first goal is that the image supports the page rankings and the traffic. So on an individual page, so if I have a page and it's for internet marketing company San Diego, right? On that page, I want to have images on that page that relate to that keyword so that when Google crawls the page, they want to rank that page higher for that term because the image has been optimized properly. And we'll get more into that, okay? So individual rankings inside of Google are influenced by how the images on the page are optimized. Goal two, how the images rank in Google image search, right? So within Google, there's a bunch of tabs at the top, right? There's web, there's image, there's video, right? And when you click on image, you'll see all of those great images that are pulled from people's websites and displayed in there. So we wanna make sure that our, our images show up in image search so that people click on that and they come to our website. And third, so that our images display correctly in social media, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, right? All of these important sites for driving referring site traffic need to have images in them from our website that are optimized correctly to show up in there. And I'm gonna tell you how to do that as well. So when it comes to SEO, the first thing you wanna do, you wanna make sure you know what your keyword is for the page, okay? So when you know what your keyword is for the page, you're gonna to wanna to take that term and work that into your image file name. So it would be keyword jpeg or you know jpeg gif or png those are kind of like the main file types for images so it would be image.jpg and then you also want to put it into the alt text so the alt text is when you hover over an image that's what shows up you'll see a little bit of text come up that's called the alt text or alternate text right so you want to make sure that your keyword is also in the alternate text and that that alternate text is descriptive, right? It kind of makes sense and describes what the image is. What that was originally created for is people who are visually impaired. So what they do is they have software that will allow them to kind of uh, diagnose what the image is about, right? And the alt text allows them to do that. There's also the title, the image title. So you wanna make sure that the title's also descriptive and that your keyword's in there too, right? And then also the image caption. Um, you'll wanna make sure that your keyword's in there also. So for SEO, if you have all of, if you have your keyword in each of these elements, what happens is, is when Google crawls the page and then they see the image and then they see all the keywords aligned within that image, they know what that image is about. That helps them rank it in Google image search and it also helps them rank that individual web page higher for that particular term. Now, also there's things like image optimization like from a technical perspective. So you wanna make sure that your image is the correct size for the page, right? So if you have an image and on the page it only needs to be 600 pixels wide by 300 pixels tall, right? But when you upload it, it's like, you know, 2000 by, you know, some other huge number, then what happens is, is that has to be resized when the page is loaded. And that makes the page really, really slow. So you want to make sure that when you upload your images, that they're the correct file size for the page, right? They're the correct um, pixel width for the page, exactly what you're going to be using. And then that will increase your page speed. Also, you wanna make sure that you're saving your images for web, right? So if you're in Photoshop, if you're in you know, one of these tools, whenever you save your images, save them for web. When you do that, that's gonna reduce the file size, right? So that it's, it's not a really, really big file that has to be loaded. It's a much smaller file that's more web friendly. Both of these things will increase your page speed. And then kind of the final component is every website needs to have a image XML sitemap. Now, if you're on WordPress, and you're using Yoast or something like that, a lot of times these things come automatically installed, but for other content management systems, they don't. So make sure you have an image XML sitemap, make sure you're submitting that sitemap to Google Search Console, 
And if you're doing all of these things, you're gonna be in a pretty good spot for the basics of image optimization from the SEO perspective, right? We haven't gotten into the social stuff yet. So other things, um, make sure that your images do not create a new HTML attachment page. So what do I mean by that? Well, sometimes um, within certain content management systems, when you upload an image, it's gonna make a new URL that's just a basic HTML page with the image on it. That gets indexed, that creates duplicate content, it's just not a good thing, right? So make sure that you're, you're not creating new HTML pages. The image can live by itself on its own individual URL. That's totally okay, that's actually ideal, but it shouldn't be a new HTML page that lives by itself. Also, there's something called image metadata, right? And a lot of people actually don't know about this. And there's three types of image metadata. There's technical, descriptive, and administrative. Don't worry about technical. Don't worry about administrative. Worry about descriptive. So what that means is there's a way that you can describe what your image is about. You can put a couple keywords in there. You can say who created it. Um, basic notes and, and things like that, kind of what it's about. And by doing that, anytime anybody goes to your image and looks at it, they'll be able to get a bit of information about it. So that's, that's a good thing to have as well. We talked about JPEGs, GIF, and PNG being the, the most popular types of, of image files, right? Most people will use JPEGs for general web images like blog posts and things like that. And then when it comes to GIFs and PNGs, those are often used for logos and, and, and kind of you know, different, different things that aren't just a basic image within a, a web page, okay? And finally, on the SEO side, watch out for content delivery networks. So what that is, is if you're looking to increase page speed, content delivery networks can be a great way to deliver your content super fast. But one of the things that they do is if you're using them, so that you can deliver your images, a lot of times they change the URLs, right? And whenever you change image URLs, just like whenever you change an HTML page URL, there's a really good chance that um, you're gonna lose all of those rankings, right? So you always wanna put in 301 redirects, otherwise you could lose a lot of traffic. I personally worked with some large websites that have changed all their image URLs and lost a ton of rankings, and it was not a good thing. And a lot of referring site traffic and image traffic from Google Image Search and stuff like that. So if you're using a content delivery network, make sure before you migrate, you kinda ask them about how they handle that process. So let's jump into social media. So when it comes to social media, you want to be thinking about, of course, you know, these top three sites, right? So Facebook, Twitter, and then of course, Pinterest. So for Facebook, for an ideal Facebook post, you want your image to be 1200 um, by 630. That's pretty much the best size for Facebook to be posting really high quality images there that are going to have the right resolution, okay? Now the minimum, is going to be 600 by 315 um, for a regular vertical post, right? And you've seen in, in Facebook, they've got the vertical, excuse me, the, the horizontal posts that kind of look like this, and then they've got the little thumbnails, right? So for, for the nice big horizontal ones, the maximum that you can have is, or kind of the best one that you can have is 1200 by 630. The minimum is 600 by 315. Now you can go smaller than that. So you can have a smaller image. You can actually go all the way down to 200 by, by 200, but if it's smaller than 615, it's gonna come out looking like a thumbnail, right? So instead of looking like a nice horizontal post image like this, it's gonna look more like this, right? And then you're gonna have a little bit of text over here. So. You know, there actually might be times when you want to do more of a thumbnail, where you want to put more emphasis on the text. But in general, I would say that these nice horizontal ones look better, and I've seen them perform a little bit better. Just a lot more kind of image front and center, and, and users generally click on them quite a bit. Okay? So that's called Facebook Open Graph Image. So within the HTML of your page, right, you can specify Facebook open graph image information, right? Facebook open graph 
is code that goes inside of the HTML of your page. And one of the code elements is telling Facebook where your image is. So you want to make sure that you're specifying your Facebook open graph image data, right? And then that you have that image the right file size. There's also something called Twitter cards. Twitter cards, there's a whole bunch of different types of Twitter cards. The one that we're focusing on here is the photo Twitter card. And basically within the HTML of your page, you can tell Twitter that this is the image that I want to use, right? And it will display that just like Facebook. This is the image I want to use. Please display this image, right? And it can be really helpful so that Facebook or Twitter pick up the correct image. So when it comes to Twitter, the maximum height is 375 by 435 wide, right? And the minimum is 280 high by 150 wide. Okay, so that's for a Twitter card, right? Um, for photos specifically, the photo Twitter card. There's different types of Twitter cards. There's summary Twitter cards, there's video Twitter cards and stuff like that. We can talk about that more in another video. And then finally, there's rich pins. So for Pinterest, there's something called rich pins. So within the HTML of your page, you can tell Pinterest a whole bunch of information. You can tell them a bunch of information about a product, right? You can let them know the product name, the product price, and, and all kinds of stuff like that, right? What we're talking about here is kind of specifically, you know, for images. Now, when it comes to Pinterest, they say that the best image size for Pinterest is 735 right wide actually by 1102 pixels tall so that's going to be your ideal size now this gets kind of complicated right because think about this we've got a lot of different sizes here and that's why a lot of people will use facebook open graph twitter cards and rich pins all on the same page so that they're kind of optimizing all these things perfect for each of the social media networks now i know that gets complicated do the best that you can for your website um, but that is you know can be ideal if you're a bigger site to make sure you really have your images dialed in so overall these are the most important things that you want to think about for image optimization this takes into account seo this takes into account some basic web dev stuff, right? Page speed, the technical aspects, as well as social media. I hope this was interesting to you, and I can't wait to see you for the next training video. Have a great day.